All right, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about things that you can do with Leaflet for creating these interactive maps. So the first thing I want to talk about is pop-ups. These are really helpful because they really let you figure out what a point that you see on your, on your map, figure out more information about that point. So let me show an example, and then we'll go back and look a little bit more at how to make them. So I've created pop-ups on this map, and you can see when you click on one of these, it gives information about that accident, like the weekday, the month, the hour, and the number of fatalities that were involved in the accident. So it's really easy to do just the initial pop-up information if you already have a column. So let me start by showing you that. Um, so here, let me go to the circle markers. And then I've just got the regular tiles here. And then we'll make the radius a little bit smaller than the default since there's so many points here. All right, so we've got these right now. And right now you can click on them, but nothing comes up. If you want information, you can put in the pop-up option equals, and then we can reference one of the columns in our data set. So let's look again at our data set. And um, let's see. So we could put in, if we wanted to, just the number of fatalities. So we'll do the tilde again. Again, the convention here is in these layers that you're adding for Leaflet. If you want to reference a column that you have in the data you're passing in, you need to put a tilde in front of the column name. So we'll do that, and then we want to do the spheres. All right, so now when we click on one of these, it should tell us the number of fatalities in theory. Ah, I think it needed it as a character rather than a numeric. So if we put it in paste, and we're going to head that way anyway, but if we put it inside paste, it will let us see that. Let's see if this has character when I've done that. Yeah, so it does look like it needs to be in a character type of vector. Um, so we can put this, but we might want to put a little bit more information in. So one way that you can do that is you can actually add on a column to your data frame where you have everything that you want to print out there. So let's try doing that. Let's do accident data. And then we'll mutate. And make this new column called pop-up info. And in this case, let's paste the fatals, but then also we could put in this like number of fatalities. So now it'll print out number of fatalities each time and then that number. All right, so we can do that and now we have this new column that we can use the pop-up info. So now when you click on these, You'll, you'll see that it has number of fatalities and one. Now we can make these even fancier. The only trick is that we need to use um, HTML kind of markup language to do it. So if we wanted to make this bold, in HTML you actually tag that with these like start and stop bold. So now you can see Right, right, let me see. Let's try that. There we go. So now you can see that it's done that part in bold, but then the number itself is not in bold. Now, if we wanted to add other things, we can do that as well. Um, we might actually want to pull some information out of that date. So if you remember, you look back at the accident data. Uh, we've got some information on the date right here. And I believe that the class of that is in a date time. Let's double check. Yeah, so we can use Luber date and we can pull out some parts of that. So we could um, we can make a new column that's got the month. But that pulls out the month of what column is this again? State. And then we could pull out, let's see what else did I put in here. We could do the weekday and then we could do the hour. 
And for that, maybe we want the label equals true and that it's not abbreviated. That'll give us the full like Monday, Sunday, and so on. So I'm doing fault, abbrev equals false to make that show up that way. So let's take a look just at what we have right now. All right, so now we have this weekday, we have the month. Oh, we probably want the label for that too. We'll do label equals true. We want to abbreviations for that either. All right, let's take a look at that. That looks good. So we have the full month, we have the weekday. So we could go ahead and add that in here too. So we could do let's see, month. And then that column we named month, and then we could do a uh, day of week. And what did we mean by we mean that weekday? All right. And then if we want both of these in bold, we can do that same trick. Try to get the, the flash the right direction this time. So again, this is the HTML markup rather than markdown markup, which is what we used before. All right, so let's take a look at that. So now we can see it, but they're all going to be on the same line, and they just kind of wrap when they get to the end of it. So maybe we want these in separate lines. For HTML, we can do, let's see, I think it is, I have to double check, BR and then the slash. All right, so if we do, this, this will do a line break. It's just like doing the the um, the slash n that we do sometimes. Okay. And one more time. <laughs> there we go. I think I got it that time. And now when we click on one of these, you can see it's got those line breaks. So these are on separate lines now. Let me see, and then the one other thing that I had put in here was doing the hour. So in this case, if we wanna make the hour, like the time part look pretty, we can use format, and we can use those conventions um, from POSIX for how to format the time. So this is gonna give us two digits for the hour and two digits for the minute. So let's add that to you. What was it? Just the date. All right, I think that I've got everything that we wanted. So again, what we're doing here is we are adding this column called pop-up info, and we're working in with paste, we're working in all of the syntax using HTML markup language to make it look fancy, and then pasting in values from the data frame for the things that we want specific to each point. So this is showing specific information on the date and time and number of fatalities for this particular point. If we look at the data frame now, it's going to look a little bit weird because it's got this one really long column that's got all that HTML stuff for our pop-up to show up. You could also, if you wanted, create this as a separate vector and then pass this in, but I think it's kind of convenient to keep everything together and then that makes your, your code down here nice and succinct. All right, so this is going through everything that we just covered working through in R. Uh, to create those pop-ups, I'm going to put it in a different order here. That's pretty close. So all of the information right here. So <laughs> I know this is asking you to figure out a new set of conventions in, in terms of markup conventions for HTML. If you aren't familiar with HTML syntax, there's a really nice cheat sheet that I put a link to here. And it doesn't go into loads and loads of stuff. There's lots of stuff that you can do with these. But um, it does give most of the ones you might want to do. So if you want to create lists, you can, do, um, you can do that. If you want to do links, you could actually have links in here that link out 
to different stuff. Um, and this shows the convention for doing that. Um, yeah, so this, this will get you most of the way that you might want to go. One cool thing, um, let me see if I can find it quickly. So, oh, I spelled it wrong. Um, so Sean Cross, who, who is a friend and who I've worked on a, an online book with before, um, he was curious what exactly you could put in these markers. So he actually tried to see if you could put images in the markers. And he figured out a way to go in and put all kinds of different, like really fancy grass inside of these. Um, and he even figured out how to put the leaflet map inside it so you can keep on just kind of going deeper and deeper if you want. Um, so you can really do all kinds of things inside these markers as long as you keep in mind this idea that you need to express it as a line that goes, um, as something that goes in that you can then reference as the pop-up. So it needs to be something using these kinds of like HTML conventions. All right, for the next thing, let's look at adding some color to this. So we might want to take something that we have in the data frame and map color to it. Um, if we look right here, this is what we're aiming for. In this case, I've taken the number of drunk drivers involved with each accident, and the color is showing that. And this is using the Veritas, pil um, the Veritas palette that we've used before. So we're going to do something interesting to do this. Instead of just kind of saying, I want this to go with this color, the, this column in the data frame. We actually need to create a palette and, and, and like it's a palette function. And then that's what we pass in because that way when it's scrolling around and all of that, it can, it can kind of reassess and regenerate that as we have these different link levels of scaled in or scaled out or panned around. So we're going to use this color factor function to do that. If we had something that was a numeric value or if we had something that was a binary value, there are different color think numeric and color binary that come with the leaflet package that lets you work with different data types. But in this case, these are all small integers, so we're going to work with color factor, and that way instead of having a scale, we can have these, these five discrete colors of the numbers that we might come across. So to do that, we're going to do Veritas. I think in the slides I do this with um, Veritas Lite, but if you have Veritas loaded, that will have, have automatically loaded the function that we need for this as well. So if you do Veritas and then you do a number, it will give you the list of colors in the Veritas palette, that number of them kind of like evenly along the palette. These are all hexadecimal colors and you can look, let's see, HTML. You can look at some HTML color codes. So any color that you could imagine is represented by red, green, and blue. And they're actually, um, these can be represented either by doing like up to 255 or with using the hexadecimal version of each of that. So these first two I think are giving the red and then these next two are giving the green and the next two are giving the blue. And you can actually kind of play around and see those different colors. So when you look at each of these, each of these is using that kind of representation to represent a color in the scale. So we can do this color factor then and create a function that's going to go inside the leaflet that's going to pair up each of the number of fatalities to that, that specific color in the palette. By putting this value in, we're going to say that, that it'll take that range and that'll be the full domain. All right, so let's come in and do this. So we'll do, actually don't this now. We'll do color factor. And the palette we want to use in this case is Veritas. And we want to do that with five different levels. So this will be kind of like a scale with five colors. And then for the domain, we want that to pair up the number of drunk drivers in this. So that is this drunk DR. So this will take whatever the maximum of this is and kind of pair that up with the highest color. And then it'll take the lowest, which is going to be zero, and pair that up with the lowest color on the scale and then place things evenly in between. 
So if we run, let's run this and let's save it as this PAL object for palette. So if we take a look at this, this is actually a function. So it is like written a function for us by calling this function. If we want to check, we can check the class of it too. We'll see from that as well. So what happens is this gives a way for passing in the information on any data point as you like pan around and it'll match it correctly with the color as you do that. So once we've created this, we can take, we can take our code and then we're going to match up and say that pal equals PAL and we want to apply it on one of the columns in our data. In this case, the column that we want to apply it to again is the drunk DR and because we're referencing a column in our data, again this is different from a lot of the other stuff that we've done where we didn't need the tilde, but we do need the tilde to say look in the data that we're passing in. Oh sorry, color. There we go. All right, so now you can see each of these is matched up with the color. Now, we might want a legend just to, to remember what purple is in this case or what, I think there's one more of a yellow one somewhere in there right, right around here and then the green. So we can do that as another level. We can do add legend. Again, if we want to reference this data, one of the columns in the data, the easiest way to do that is going to be to pass the data in again. We can say what we want the title to be. And then the other pieces that we need to include in this are we need to include what the palette is and then what the values are. And this is going to be, again, the column that we're using. So in this case, our palette is from the PAL function that we were using, and then the values are coming in from this accident data, the column that's being drunk. So now you can see that we have the legend right up here. And there are different options in this add legend for where we place this initially, and some other things about the appearance of it that you can play around with. All right, so I, I zoomed through a few slides there, but these are all reminders of things we were already doing. So this is talking through how we use this color function to add in our color. That the palette that we create with color factor, that that is actually a function itself. And then to add the legend, we use this add legend. All right, we can also add polygons to this. So far, we've really been focusing on points, but some of the data that we got when we first were, were looking at Leaflet was the borders of uh, the different census tracts in Denver. We can add those by doing add polygons, and then we'll reference that data. Because the data was already in an SF object, we don't need to say columns that have latitude and columns that have longitude. Those SF objects have that special type of column that's got the geometry. So let's take a look at that again. This is the Denver tracks. And again, as a reminder, we loaded that in using the tracks function from the Tigris package. All right, so this looks like a regular data frame for most of the columns, but then it's got this special geometry one. And this is where Leaflet will get the information to plot this out. So let's create a Leaflet object again. And then we'll add tiles. We'll just do the basic ones. So again, this would just look like this. And then we're going to add polygons since these are not points. They're actually the, the boundaries of things. All right, and then our data in this case is the Denver track. All right, so now you can see it's added that, and it's got the outline less transparent, and then the center of it is pretty transparent, so we can still see the, the tiles that come underneath this. We can add um, pop-ups for this as well, so we can do that same trick where we add on a column, and for these, there's a tracked ID right here, so we could add that on if we wanted. I think I did it a little bit differently in the slides, but we should be able to do it this way. We can do Aztec character. Well, actually, we could piece this together and say what it is. I 
again, I've got the tilde at the front because they've got something in here I'm referencing that is a column in the data frame that we're sending in. By the way, this warning message down here, we would probably want to take care of this if we were working with this to create something kind of like production ready. So the projection for this is a little bit different from the one that's going in for the tiles. And so we could go through and change that in SF itself um, by setting a different project projection excuse me, to have it line up a little bit more with the base map. Um, so that's something that we would probably want to go in and do if we were creating this for again, for kind of like production quality stuff. In this case, these probably aren't going to line up too, too differently um, from what they would look like if we change the projection. All right, and so in this case, we added the pop-ups and we can see that when we click on it, we have this now. So we can overlay these different elements, just like with ggplot we went through and we looked at how we can have all these different layers. We can do the same thing with polygon, with, with um, leaflet. So right now we've got the polygons, but we could also go back and we could add in our circle markers and then the legend and the color and all the pieces that we have for that. So you can see now we have all of that. It's getting a little busy and we might want to play around some with the colors and with the transparency and all of that to have it show up a little bit better. But now you can see that you click on a point, you get information about that point. But then if you click on the track somewhere other than a point, you're getting information um, based on the pop-up for the polygon. Here in the code, you can play around with this some, but I've done some things like lowered the opacity. This is similar to alpha and ggplot. And so by doing this, we're going to end up with um, things that you can see through a little bit more. And so it might be a little bit clearer. And then the other thing here is I've used the color specifications. And this is using the, the hexadecimal representations for those colors. So we can add that in for the polygons and change from the default. So this gives us a darker background that might make those, this point show up a little bit better. We can also change, let me see, the weight, I think, is just the, the thickness of those outside lines. The kind of borders around each tract. Yeah, so that's helped clarify things a little bit. All right, one last thing. This is pretty cool. So you can add what are called layer controls. And this will let people click on and off. If you've got lots of these layers, they can select which ones they want to see at any given moment. So we're going to add that on. It's just one more layer. All right. And then we say what we want for the base groups. And in this case, I think we just want the base map. Yeah. All right. And then we can say which overlay groups we want. And here we need to specify when we're putting in here what the names of these are. So this is saying this group is tracks and this group is accidents and then this is referencing those names down here. It's over like groups. All right, so now we get this new thing over here. Let me zoom in a little bit at this point so we can see it bigger. All right, so when we scroll over this or when somebody viewing your map scrolls over it, they now have the option that they can switch these on and off if they want. So if you want to see the points without those polygons behind, those tracks behind, you can click on these and those go away. If you want to see just the tracks without the accidents, or if you want to just see the underly map. So this lets people kind of play around a little bit more and explore the data in the, the way that they want to look at it and take away parts they're not interested in. So this has just been a taste of how you can get started with using Leaflet. There, there are loads more resources on it. A great place to start is with the HTML widgets are, let's see, Leaflet. 
So this is through our studio. They've got lots of great information. If you go to the link here, it gives you a whole tutorial where you can go through and their whole sections on like how to do different colors and make those work and, and how to do your legends. All of the pieces we talked about, the projection, the warning message that we can get, we were getting, um, base maps, all of that. Um, there's also a nice blog post from Zeb Ross that talks a little bit about how to do this with some U.S. Census data. It's also using Tigris, but then it's also using ACS, which is another nice package. And so that gives you a chance to go through and see another example of how you can build up some really nice, attractive, fancy maps doing this.